afternoon. Um, today we are also joined by a group of young women with the ambition of taking my job one day. Uh, they are winners of the MPC Schools Challenge uh, for, uh, 20, uh, for 2019. Uh, let's get on to the business. Um, since the July meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee, economic indicators confirm weaker global economic conditions and low inflation. Central banks in advanced economies have provided more monetary accommodation, helping to ease global financial conditions. Downside risks from escalating trade and geopolitical tensions remain pronounced. In the second quarter of this year, South Africa's GDP rebounded from the contraction experience in the first quarter, but economic activity levels still remain weak. Monetary, monthly inflation has been around the midpoint of the inflation target range, as food and services inflation remained subdued. The year-on-year -year inflation rate, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, for all urban areas was 4.3% in August. Goods price inflation in August was 3.9%, while services price inflation remained at 4.7%. Food price inflation rose to 3.9% due to rising cereal and, and bread prices. The bank's measure of core inflation, which excludes food, fuel, and electricity, rose slightly to 4.3 percent. Producer price inflation for final manufactured goods decreased to 4.9 percent in July. The medium-term inflation outlook is largely unchanged. The inflation forecast generated by the SAP's quarterly projection model is for headline inflation to average 4.2 percent in 2019. The projection for 2020 is unchanged at 5.1 percent and for 2021, slightly up to 4.7%. Headline CPI inflation is expected to peak at 5.3% in the first quarter of 2020 and settle at 4.5% in the last quarter of 2021. The forecast for core inflation is lower at 4.3% in 2019, is unchanged at 4.7% in 2020, and is slightly higher at 4.6% in 2021. Electricity, food and fuel price inflation continue to shape the near and medium term trajectory of headline inflation. Fuel price inflation is expected to average 2.4% in 2019 and to peak at 11.8% in the first quarter of 2020. While food price inflation has generally surprised on the downside, it is expected to peak at about 6% in the third quarter of 2020. Electricity prices came out higher than expected in August at 11.8%, but remain in line with the forecast. Inflation expectations have continued to moderate gradually. According to the Bureau for Economic Research third quarter survey, Expectations for headline inflation are down slightly from 2019 to 4.6%. Expectations for 2020 remain unchanged at 5% and eased from 5.2% to 5.1% for 2021, reaching the lowest levels since 2007. Five years ahead, inflation expectations also declined to 5%. The inflation expectations for market analysts in the September 2019 Reuters Econometer survey have been revised lower to 4.3% for 2019 and remain unchanged at 4.9% and 4.8% in 2020 and 2021, respectively. Market-based uh, expectations implicit in the break-even inflation rate that is the yield differential between conventional and inflation-linked bonds, have remained stable since the previous MPC. Five-year break-even rates are currently about 4.6% and 
and 10-year break-even rates at 5.4%. Global GDP is expected to slow to 3.2% in 2019 and rise to around 3.5% in 2020. While global growth remains resilient, recent indicators on trade and manufacturing have deteriorated and a range of downside risks to growth remain. Growth in world trade volumes has continued to decline, with trade tensions weighing on market confidence and lowering investment. Other downside uh, risks include geopolitical developments, further oil price shocks, and high levels of corporate and sovereign debt. Across most countries, there is limited policy space to respond to shocks. Inflation outcomes and inflation expectations in most advanced economies remain below targeted levels. Barring significant shocks, monetary policy in major advanced economies will remain accommodative over the medium term. However, market expectations of further accommodation appear high, creating ongoing risk of market volatility should this not materialize. Since the July MPC, the rent has depreciated by 4.6% against the US dollar and by 3% against the euro. The implied starting point for the rent is 14 rents 88 cents against the US dollar compared with 14 rents 40 cents at the time of the previous meeting. At these levels, the QPM assesses the rent to remain slightly undervalued. While the rent has benefited from improvements in global sentiment, investors remain concerned about domestic growth prospects and fiscal risks. GDP rebounded to 3.1% in the second quarter, following a decline of 3.1% in the first quarter. The sharp quarterly rebound was caused by stronger output in nearly all sectors, including investment and government consumption spending. However, longer-term weakness in most sectors remains a serious concern. Based on recent short-term economic indicators for mining and manufacturing sectors, the third quarter GDP outcome is expected to be muted. Business confidence has declined further. The APSA Purchasing Managers Index came out at 45.7 points in August, and the RMB BER Business Confidence Index fell to 21 points. The SAP's Composite Leading Business Cycle Indicator also continued to trend lower, although the coincident indicator remains positive. The forecast of GDP growth for 2019 remains unchanged at 0.6%. The forecast for 2020 and 2021 have decreased to 1.5% and 1.8% respectively due to revisions to global growth and domestic potential growth. The MPC assesses the risk to the growth forecast to be balanced in the near term, but remains concerned about medium-term growth and weak employment prospects. Escalation in global trade tensions, further domestic supply constraints, and or sustained higher oil prices could generate headwinds to growth. Public sector financing remains remain high. Remain, public sector financing needs remain high, exerting pressure on the currency and pushing local bond yields higher relative to country peers. Implementation of prudent macroeconomic policies and structural reforms that lower costs and raise investment and potential growth remains urgent. The overall risk, risks to the inflation outlook are assessed to be largely balanced. Demand-side pressures remain subdued, and food, wages, and rental prices are expected to increase at moderate rates. Global inflation should remain low. In the absence of shocks, relative exchange rate stability is expected to continue. Some upside risks to the inflation outlook remain, in particular from fuel, electricity, and water prices. 
The NPC welcomes the sustained moderation in inflation outcomes and the fall in inflation expectations of about 1% since 2016. The committee would like to see inflation expectations also anchored closer to the midpoint of the inflation target range on a sustained basis. Against this backdrop, the MPC unanimously decided to keep the repurchase rate unchanged at 6.5% per annum. Monetary policy actions will continue to focus on anchoring inflation expectations near the midpoint of the inflation target range in the interest of balanced and sustainable growth. In this persistently uncertain environment, future policy decisions will continue to be highly data dependent, sensitive to the assessment of the balance of risks to the outlook, and will seek to look through temporary price shocks. The implied path of policy rates over the forecast period generated by the quarterly projection model indicated no changes to the repo rate. This remains a broad policy guideline which could change in either direction from meeting to meeting in response to new developments and changing data and risks.